Hello everyone, a uh, very good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all of you. This is your host Vaibhav. Sorry for the delay, there were some problems with the launch of the OBS and as a result of that, the stream is uh, starting a bit uh, later than the scheduled time. So now that we are here and uh, getting started for uh, today's session, as the US session is going to get underway very soon, we have to consider the price action which has been the mainstay of European trading session, particularly in the forex segment, so that we can draw a uh, inference and uh, see how things are likely to shape up depending on the momentum which is prevailing at the moment. We can decide if it is strong enough to sustain or if it is likely to change course. So let us now head to the JForex4, the newly released trading platform from the Jukoskoti Bank SA. This is the chart for the S&P 500. First, we will be considering the Forex segment. So, here is the chart for Euro USD drawn on the candle period of hourly. And here, so far in the day, we haven't really seen any big moves in the Forex currency cross of the Euro USD. It started the day around the same levels which are prevailing right now. It uh, actually went on to rise in the Asian trading session and in the initial hours of the European trading session but those gains evaporated and it was uh, back to these uh, prior swing low levels but in today's session it is holding well above yesterday's low so it seems like that we are back in the same formation of higher highs and higher lows and uh, as things stand I think we can indeed go for a buy on dips trade here as long as the immediate low stand we do have the chance of seeing the euro usd climb higher towards uh, 1.091 or even beyond that in next couple of hours or maybe in a couple of days you can say because in the market we can't really time it but as the projections stand we do have the possibility of euro usd continuing to rise with these uh, high rise and higher lows formation in place let's consider what's the lower time frame chart is telling us for the euro usd the initial gains didn't really last and we saw this decline of around 50 pip from the higher levels but uh, if we compare it to the other asia pacific currencies of aud and the nzd the selling is quite sharp in those currencies for the euro the selling is uh, comparatively mild and if we compare it to the its other European peers, GBP in particular, the GBP is uh, not even that bearish in today's session. In yesterday's session, it was one of the most bearish currency, but today things seem to have changed and it is one of the least bearish currency if we compare its timeline of uh, decline to other major currencies in prey. If we simply look at this uh, decline of the GBP USD, it is the shallow in terms of magnitude and also if we see the timeline it is lagging compared to the other major currencies trading against the dollar and now we are seeing the shift of the momentum with it trying to rise and going on to make this fresh four hourly high at around 1.233 so if we have to look at the euro usd price formation immediately even for any buy trade to be taken against the uh, dollar if you are uh, expecting the other major currencies to appreciate against the dollar euro usd is not going to be the first choice looking at its timeline of the high and uh, low formation if we look at the gbp it is looking much better placed compared to the euro so that is something which we will have to keep in mind so for any buy trade i think we will do well to keep uh, our focus on the gbp which is not exactly bullish so in today's session it is more of a consolidation phase with the buying happening on the lower side but on the higher side the gains are indeed capped and we haven't really seen any fresh impetus but if we have to go with the flow and uh, bet on the continuation of the dollar strength then we have the asia pacific currencies which are much more bearish so in those major currency crosses it will be better deal to go for the short selling trades 
instead of trying our hands in euro or gbp for that matter so if we look at the price formation of the AUD usd here it is in a correction phase but its con correction is ongoing it is still to find the support on the lower level so keeping that in mind we will have to go with the flow and keep looking for the opportunity to short with this uh, current fall likely to deepen further so that possibility remains in this case and uh, if we compare it to the other asia pacific pair of nzd it is also showing the same trajectory with this uh, slight consolidation bias it is not exactly as bearish as aud for the aud the timeline has been of uh, continuous decline but for nzd it is uh, of consolidation with the bias on the bearish side so that is something which uh, differentiates these two and if we enlarge the time frame on this also the nzd is uh, looking bearish if we see its immediate swing low formation it is lower compared to the prior swing low and uh, that opens up the possibility of nzd dipping further towards this uh, immediate swing low of uh, 0.643 or even beyond that so for uh, today's session the short sell trades i think are to be preferably taken in these uh, asia pacific currencies of aud and nzd as both these currencies are strongly bearish and if we compare the immediate price formation let's consider when this high was formed swing high was at 9.20 for NZD for AUD it is around the same time but earlier in the day the NZD AUD was climbing up and uh, later on it seems to be catching up to this uh, prior gains are now evaporating so because of that we are seeing steep decline in the AUD and NZD as it was not really high earlier in the day it is uh, quite lower compared to the prior swing low and that is creating the difference but it is uh, almost the same and i think any of these two currencies can be kept in loop for the short sale with AUD being on the preferable side euro is not looking exactly bearish and uh, since it is trying to follow its other european peer gbp on the higher side i think uh, we should be avoiding the euro for any kind of trade as it is not bullish nor it is strongly bearish so it is more likely to trade in this range with the gains likely to be shallower on both the sides so i think it is better to be avoided now let's invert the scales and consider the usd cad usd chf and usd jpy for usd cad the low happened at around same time as is the case with aud and nzd from there on it uh, went on to rise towards 1.338 but uh, it uh, couldn't really hold on to the momentum and uh, now it is also in a consolidation phase so it is not really holding up to the prior gain so usd cad is not looking strongly bullish for today's session let's consider its hourly time frame charting it's taking some time to load all right i think we are getting there Again, let's try to change. Okay, for USD CHF, the chart loaded quite faster. For USD CHF, the phase is of consolidation. For most of the major currencies today, the story is pretty much similar. These are not strongly bullish or bearish signals. It is pretty much of trading within the range. And if we consider this lower time frame charting, the CHF has been one of the strongest currencies against the dollar in today's session and uh, of late the gbp is also following the same path now after these prior gains the chf is uh, consolidating with the usd chf price range of around uh, 50 points for today's session 
we do have to keep covering the CHF in today's session. I think with the immediate price formation of uh, a fresh low in place, the USD CHF is likely to consolidate with uh, immediate bias on the bearish side. But apparently, it is not as strong as GBP. For GBP, newer swing high came in. But uh, if we consider the hourly time frame charting, the USD CHF seems to be better placed. So it's now a matter of choice, I would say, with the GBP leading the path first, but uh, CHF also showing similar price formation so you will have to go with the flow and uh, any of these two currencies which are similarly placed can be taken into consideration but given the higher volatility for gbp i would prefer to trade with the gbp let's go back to the usb cad I don't know why the USD cards hourly chart takes so long to load. Let's shift to USD JPY. In uh, today's session, the JPY has also gained substantially against the US dollar. Actually, JPY has been the biggest gainer for today's session with these uh, price levels starting to decline from 130.5 towards 129.5. Even now, the JPY is one of the strongest currency against the US dollar. So, keeping up with this price formation, I would say that uh, JPY is the most bullish against the dollar. Whereas, if we look at the GBP, it is not particularly bullish. So, in that scenario, the preference can be given to the JPY. And if we consider the higher price frame, higher time frame trajectory this is also pretty much similar so with this uh, fresh break below this yesterday's low we have the possibility of USD JPY changing course from this formation of higher highs and higher lows towards this uh, newer trajectory of a maybe a new swing high which is lower than the prior high can be formed but right now the momentum is uh, bearish so keeping up with that the JPY seems to be the most bullish currency for uh, today's session to trade against the dollar and uh, we have the AUD as the most bearish currency against the dollar in today's session so we have this whole spectrum of uh, major currencies and there is divergence because there is no strong trend in today's session, it is more of a consolidation day with uh, AUD USD consolidating with bearish bias. Whereas the USD JPY, as the JPY is gaining ground against the dollar, USD JPY is uh, also in bearish mood. So both these possibilities are pointing to the short selling trades in respective trades. But the picture is opposite. In one case, the dollar is getting strong in another case of the usd gpy dollar is losing ground so there is this divergence but it is as i said can be explained by the fact of uh, absence of a strong trend in the dollar and uh, these major currencies are trading on their own factors with the technicals in play with this uh, consolidation phase ongoing now let's go to the equity segment and see how things are shaping up in the US equity futures in particular. For today's session, the US equity futures are sliding downhill. From the start of the European trading session, we have seen the decline of more than half a percentage point for the Dow Jones Industrial Average futures and it is uh, almost closer to the immediate swing low which was formed in yesterday's session. But in yesterday's session, it was a case of formation of higher highs and higher lows. So in yesterday's session, during the webinar, I had talked about the possibility of a change of course. And um, the initial focus was on going for a buy on dip trade as long as it was not really breaking below the immediate swing low. But uh, today, it is a difficult call as we have these uh, 
i which is almost identical to the prior high so i think we will have to look at the price formation of these uh, us equity futures in a different light and uh, if we consider the s p 500 it didn't really make a fresh swing low and it seems to be quite uh, much more bullish compared to the price formation of the dow jones industrial average so for uh, today's session the picture is getting clearer with the s p 500 leading the decline on the lower side with uh, losses of almost close to one percentage point from the higher side to the lower side which is also much more in comparison to the decline which we are observing for the Dow Jones Industrial Average but the timeline of these uh, both the declines is almost similar there is not much of any difference but given the higher volatility and stronger moves in the S&P 500 the preference lies with the S&P 500 but before we can finalize the S&P 500 to be the best way to go short let's consider the Nasdaq as well and uh, Nasdaq seems to be losing ground much faster its decline is uh, more than one percentage point so keeping that in mind in today's session the theme scene seems to have changed dramatically compared to the yesterday's session at the start of yesterday's session the Nasdaq was the strongest and uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average was the least bullish so later in the day we saw the Nasdaq gaining quite a lot in comparison to the Dow Jones Industrial Average but in today's session the Nasdaq is the most bearish whereas the Dow Jones Industrial Average is the least bearish so this all three key equity indices for the US are trading in a bearish manner with the uh, decline be quite sharp for the Nasdaq in comparison to the Dow so for immediate term trade I would say that uh, the formation being bearish it will be a better idea to keep looking for the opportunities to go short and we should not really try to go against the flow not at the moment at least and uh, as long as the things stand the way they are it is better to keep looking for short selling opportunities in the Nasdaq so that's my assessment of the current price formation for these three equity indices for the United States and as the US session is going to get underway we are likely to see much more volatility in next couple of minutes and once things stabilize maybe we will be in a position to initiate the trade as well and before I wrap up the session let's take a final glance on the US uh, sorry European equity indices the DX it is uh, not as bearish as is the case with the US equity futures for FTSE 100 things are almost identical as for uh, fresh move in the FTSE 100 the momentum is on the bearish side so keeping up with that I would not really suggest any buy trade instead of that we will have to keep looking for the opportunities to sharp but short sell but I think better opportunity is there in Nasdaq so it is better to avoid the FTSE 100 for now and as and when things will start to change and things start to stabilize in that case the DX is going to be the best bet for a trade to be taken for a further move on the higher side but if you are going to go with the flow then Nasdaq is going to be natural choice looking at its current price trajectory so that's all from my side for today's session of the correlation regression where we saw the Nasdaq as the most bearish equity index for the day whereas DX is the least and on the forex side the AUD is leading the decline. AUD is the most uh, bearish currency against the dollar amongst the major currencies, whereas JPY is the most bullish currency against the US dollar. So there is a whole spectrum of possibilities in the forex market. So that was an interesting insight in uh, today's development where in the forex the moves are not much large 
the moves are pretty shallow and the consolidation phase is ongoing. For a similar inside pull analysis, we come back next time around tomorrow. So we will be considering the price formation upgrade to figure out the momentum trades, which instrument to trade in which side. So that will something which is going to help us in optimizing our profitability while trying to minimize the losses. So thank you all for joining in. Have a fabulous time ahead and a profitable day. See you next time around.